This episode of Pathfinders is sponsored by Be Spatial Ontario. Join them at bespatialontario.ca and earn GISP credits, access webinars, and read the latest GIS industry news. Around the world, in every industry, there are people who excel. People who work hard to push their industry forward, to launch innovative products, build collaborative teams, and bring people together. We call these people Pathfinders, and they help chart a path and inspire your journey. Our goal is to find these Pathfinders and bring their story to you. Well, Karen Stewart, welcome to Pathfinders. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's uh, exciting to be here. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you on the show today. You've got so much to share, so much knowledge, and uh, I'm excited. We had a little chat ahead of this call, and yeah. and uh, I already learned. I wish I could hit record on that chat. So we'll see if we <laughs> <laughs> cover it on this, this chat. chat. Will be just as insightful as the first one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Karen, I, I start every episode by asking the same question. So I want to arm my our friends out there with how to answer that question that you get. You know, when you go to a party or you're at, uh, you know, a family's house and they say, hey, what do you do for work? And you say, oh, I'm, I'm in GIS. And then you get that look on the face of what that is. So how do you answer that question when it gets asked to you? And, and how, what is what value does GIS provide to society in your mind? Okay. Well, yeah. I try to keep it really simple, you yeah. know, because most people, you know, if you get into the tech technology of it, it's too, too much. Yeah. So really geographic information systems, GIS, geographic information has, we live in the world, right? So yeah. I usually start out with, well, you know the Starbucks app and you're looking for a, <laughs> a, a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. That's that that is GIS. Like the the back end of that is GIS. But really we have been drawing maps and trying to um, explain our location since the beginning of time. If you look mm -hmm. at the petroglyphs and mm -hmm. um, that we find out there when you travel, you see pictures of what's there near them close to them what they eat what they use for transportation um mm -hmm. where they live and, and they've drawn that so gis is a is a information system it's a system of systems that need people to to run it they mm -hmm. also need we need to do some analysis on what the needs are and we put it all together to provide information to the audience, whether it's a citizen, whether it's me living in the township of Langley, mm -hmm. or whether it's a traveler coming to visit a different country, the geographic information system pulls all that information about the location together and provides it to the audience, whoever that audience is. And yeah. that's the main thing we need to think about. Yeah. So sure. when I when I teach it, when I talk to kids about it, I tell them, you know, living in a in a city, you have all the sewer mains and water mains and drainage and and um, can that do you see that when that comes up? I just I had a okay. No, I don't. No, it's fine. Anything that happens on your desktop is I don't see. So <laughs> you might think it no. Okay. Um, when I say to kids, I say, you know, you live in a you live in a community, you live in a house, and that house is at an address, which is at a point on the earth. Mm -hmm. And that point on the earth is calculated in a GIS system. And then from there you put information. Do you have a dog? Do you live in a, a house that has a garage? Do you have a well or do you use city sewer? And explain that even to the home, like to the not just the kids, but the parents. And mm. the GIS takes all that information about that particular location and makes it available to who needs it. And it could be the city administration. It could be the homeowner. It could be a developer or an engineer or a surveyor. Mm -hmm. And that's GIS to me. It's more and, than that, though. I think. Well, no, it, I was going to say, and it's, and it's nice and simple. The way you said that made me think, 
Well, of course that should exist. That's exactly something we should have in society. What about those who say, well, geez, you know, hasn't everything been mapped and what was the purpose of it anymore, right? Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, you know, interestingly enough, I've been a GIS tech in my career mm -hmm. and I've also been a CIO and I've been mm -hmm. everything in between. Right. When I, when, of course I'm a GIS, I'm passionate about GIS. I love it. I love the analysis and bringing forward the information that you can bring forward using the GIS system about mm -hmm. the location, about the trends, about what's going on in a neighborhood, what's going on in the world. But when I became CIO, I thought, wow, this is going to be an amazing place for me to really bring that forward and use oh. that that knowledge that I have to integrate all these business systems with the GIS, like with the location, uh -huh. and then have it all connect. But, but at that level, there isn't a great understanding about the mapping. There isn't a great understanding cool. about the data that we have in all these systems, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or a relational database, uh -huh. full of rich information all based on the same location, but they don't no. talk to each other. And so I think some people will say, oh yeah, we have maps, but how do those maps talk to the other business systems? And how do we get that information into the other business systems or talking to the other business systems? Yeah. So, you know, we've mapped, I've been involved in GIS since or mapping GIS since uh -huh. the early 80s, which uh -huh. okay, that probably tells you a little bit about my age. <laughs> but we started out, I started out with using paper base, paper map, paper maps, and right. then changing those and putting those in using coordinate geometry, building a digital mapping system, which I think I'll talk about in my history. Uh -huh. But those we've been doing it for a long time, yeah. but still. But still, a lot of the systems don't talk to each other and they don't, we can't get that information back and forth between the systems. So yes, we have a lot of maps, yeah. but we still need to think about who needs that information. What mm. is the value of that information to the audience and how can we bring that information forward and get the buy-in from the users or the other business owners mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to use that data? Yeah, well, it, you're you're bang on, and I see the evolution of GIS is is now into all about the data, and, and the technology is actually a, it's a geographic operating system really, mm -hmm. that that an entire city you know could benefit from. So, so tell us about your journey then, because you said you know you you were CIO and you started as a tech in the '80s, you know how have yeah. you Tell us your journey and how have you started to learn about this geographic approach over over time? Okay. Yeah. It's been quite a journey. Um, <laughs> I, I actually kind of fell into GIS, which I think most people of my generation did. Um, mm. what, what my original background is uh, graphics and communications diploma from Douglas College. And I originally, I love art. I, I love creating. And so I went in thinking, oh, I want to do communications and graphics and design. And once I graduated, I thought I'll just apply for all the big public companies in British Columbia because my dad was a public sector employee. He was an engineer. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like he had a great job. He had a great career. This is mm -hmm. where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And BC Gas at the time, they saw my application and they said, oh, she has a graphics and communications diploma. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking for a graphics terminal operator. And so they brought me in for an interview and it was to run, like it was to do GIS. It was to do mapping on an Enograph VAX like station. Um, and the reason I got the job is because while I was going to college, mm -hmm. I, was working for Thompson, Isaac and Osman, a survey firm in Langley. And I was doing some part-time work for them, drawing their legal survey plans because I had a few uh, 
drafting courses in my background. And okay. it, that's why I put myself through college. Okay. And so here I was doing manual yeah. drafting and got a job with BC Gas. And we built the, we took all the paper copies of all the legal survey plans from Hope all the way to Whistler. Oh. And on the Intergraph system, we used coordinate geometry to um, build this, build the whole map from mm -hmm. Hope to Whistler. Wow. But we didn't do City of Surrey. We left City of Surrey. There was a hole because yeah. the City of Surrey also wanted to build their base map. Okay. And we did three shifts because it was so expensive. And yeah. in those systems were built in a, in, they had to be in, um, for the young people, they wouldn't, I, I guess they wouldn't even know this, but yeah, they had to have special yeah. rooms with air conditioners. It had to be freezing cold in there because mm -hmm. the systems generated so much heat. And they were monochrome mo monitors. The ones that I worked on were green, different colors of green. So all of the GIS lines, all the like words, everything on these terminals were bright Gosh. green. Because you leave oh. work and everything you see would be green, I'd imagine. Everything was green. I think I dreamed green for years. Yeah. <laughs> One dreams. Wow. Um, not technicolor dreams, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, we had to run three shifts. So we did days, afternoons, and midnights to get the money out of those systems because we only mm. had two um, terminals. And so we all, we, there were six staff and we had to rotate. Um, and I found that really difficult from midnight mm -hmm. to eight in the morning, working on a, in a cold room, working on a, on a system. So when city of Surrey had a job opening, I applied and of course, you know, moved over there and started mm -hmm. building the base map there. So that's, uh, that's okay. really how I got my start. Oh, but, oh, really interesting thing though. When I was uh -huh. at BC gas, we had to learn, not that we learned on our own, but the Interref taught us really uh, back then. There weren't really any, I mean, the ADP at MBCIT, that wasn't in existence at the time. Yeah. Um, there really was no training other than geography uh -huh. and maybe some concepts around GIS. And so BCIT approached me. It was the coolest thing ever because I was so young <laughs> and they approached me and, and, asked me if I would write an introduction to GIS course, wow. which I did. And yeah. I taught it at night school for uh, quite a while. But Gosh. when I went to, when I went to, um, you know, city of Surrey, we only had the two shifts, which was days and afternoons. So then I couldn't really teach it anymore. And they brought it into their uh, BCIT brought it into their daytime program. And one of their professors took it over, but it was, it was cool. That's kind of how the ADP program got started at wow. BCIT. And <laughs> I was there right at the beginning. So, well, I'm writing down so a lot yeah. of firsts, a lot of firsts here. So the, either <laughs> on the, the first VAX terminal for VC Hydro or, yeah. or utilities, the first GIS program manager at BCIT. I'm curious to hear more first as we go along. Uh, more first? <laughs> 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 okay, well, after, I, I mean, I started out as a GIS technician, um, yeah. it, you know, went through a numerous t different types of um, titles, right? Mm -hmm. Graphics, you know, graphics operator, you know, it didn't really become a GIS tech till m many years later. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years at, at Surrey, I, I t took on a, several different roles and, and eventually um, I became the afternoon shift supervisor uh, for, and I stayed straight afternoons. I was on that shift for eight years. It was perfect when we had our children because uh -huh. I didn't have to, we didn't have to put our kids in daycare and it yeah. was a wonderful job for me, yeah. but yeah. I always aspire to, to keep moving up. Yeah. And when we, um, you know, it's it. I could talk for hours, but we went from the interact to MicroStation, and uh, then eventually realized, you know, we could print maps. We could print these maps for, you know, the field workers. We could print maps for planning and engineering and finance and parks and uh -huh. everybody. But nobody really had access to that digital data except uh, the operators and. Yeah eventually the city decided let's let we heard about esri you know or gis and mm -hmm. let's let's try that so um it 
asked, would someone from engineering, which I was in engineering, uh-huh. want to come down to work in IT and help us convert from MicroStation to Esri? And uh-huh. nobody really wanted to because it was so kind of new back then. And 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 the staff on engineering were like, no, it's that's never going to happen. It's not going to work. But oh, I said, pick me, pick me. Famous so last I, words. Yeah. The point of that story <laughs> is always be curious. Like, yeah. just, you know, learn as much as you can focus on continuous improvement. And mm-hmm. it was probably the best thing I ever did. So I, I got to work in IT and with a very small group of people. Yeah. What we did was we converted from the MicroStation system to Esri. Mm. And interestingly enough, we really, we used safe software, which back then was a mm. startup. Right. And I'm a fan of startups because they're amazing. They're so innovative. And they, I would never not think about using a startup because Mm. of my experience, especially with safe software, because look Mm. where they are today. And um, we met, we did it. We had trouble with the cartographic data, of course. Sure. Um, But we managed to get through that. And um, we, once we converted over, we decided to build Cosmos, which was oh, it's yeah. still in use it's still today. In, still in use. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the city of Surrey mapping online system. Yeah. And, you know, of course, back then we used AML and Avenue code. We could only offer it on, you know, internal to the organization on desktops across mm-hmm. the organization. We open, we put them at the front counters, we put them down in ops and, and wow. it was significant. And then of course, over the years, it continually improves and then yeah. we were eventually able to offer it over Jeez. to everybody. Well, so I that, gotta, yeah. that was a first, I guess. Well, I gotta say, it's not only a first, but I think I have to commend the city of Surrey because I'm thinking this is around early to mid nineties based on the tech yes. you're talking, maybe late nineties. Not many municipalities were thinking like that. And then, mm-hmm. so you were in an innovative uh, city. They still yes. remain. And just so uh, for those out there, it's just on the outskirts of Vancouver and British Columbia. Um, but that's really cool. But when an opportunity came, you took it. And, yes. and that, yeah. so, so then you went down the Esri road. So, so where did that lead you? Well, uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> you know, eventually the GIS manager role uh, came up at mm-hmm. the city of Surrey. So I applied mm-hmm. for it and that it was, it was exciting. It was fantastic. I did, I did get the job, but I know that you did ask about some of the challenges that, you know, mm-hmm. we've, we've had in our career. And for me, I hate to say it, but I think it's my generation, but I, I think I did struggle a little bit at the beginning because mm because I was a woman, I'm a woman. And when I did apply, I, I did have to go through a few hoops to get that job, mm-hmm. which I did get. And I don't know if the city still does this, but I had to go through psychometric testing. And then mm-hmm. the analysis provided information saying whether or not I would be able to do that job. Yeah. And so the psychologist said, absolutely. You know, she, yeah. so, so they gave me the job. I got the job, but one of the first things that I, they wanted me to do was even though we built, even though we were building cosmos and we knew the value of mapping, uh-huh. um, they, I think there still wasn't, they didn't understand the value of GIS for the entire organization. It was more about certain aspects like maybe engineering and mm-hmm. you know um, more the operational I wanna, yeah. yeah i don't want to put words in anybody's mouth but they there really was a little bit of a negative connotation about a gis department especially mm. because we were in engineering but yeah um so it was perceived as being an engineering gotcha. uh, tool set well so they wanted me to lay off a bunch of people because mm-hmm. there was no they, they didn't understand that value. So what I did was mm. I said, please give me six months and yeah. let me let me try to prove to you the value of GIS. Yeah. And at the time, it was quite significant because what we decided to do, and I worked with the finance department to create 
and I can't remember, it was so long ago, but <laughs> create specific kind of GL codes for different departments and GIS. So every time mm. we were asked to do something from say the city manager's office or the mayor's office mm -hmm. or from planning or parks or from bylaws that um, needed a map or needed some intervention with uh, location-based analysis, uh -huh. we tracked it and we tracked the time and we tracked uh -huh. the, you know, the request and then the output or the deliverable. Oh, that's a good idea. And a after six months, we, sh we were able to prove that most everything, maybe not everything, but most everything that a yeah. local government staff person works on is yeah. based on a location. Uh, Whether right. you're doing an analysis for where do we put a new fire hall or where do we put a new daycare or there's a economic development departments looking to bring in some business or uh, somebody needs a dog license or they, huh. they need huh. a new extra garbage pickup or a stop signs down, you know, it, it, or, or they're, they're trying to develop a new policy. The GIS kind of fits in everywhere. And so not only did we not lay off people at that time, mm -hmm. we hired people. Wow. <laughs> because now, wow. now we sort of showed, me, showed the organization yeah. and I, I did have to go to council. Really? And present my findings. Yes. And explain what we were doing and what we were using GIS yeah, for. Yeah. So, so All right, this cool. is incredible because I want to just, I want to talk about this for a little more for a sec. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, I would imagine that's in the public record. So I'd love to go on and search their archives and find your council minutes. Um, <laughs> but, but I would imagine whoever made that decision was looking at GIS as a sunk cost, probably people time, benefits, and a, probably a bunch of hardware and ongoing maintenance and not seeing thinking it was a niche tool, right? Right. Um, and then you went through an exercise to map it to GL codes and actually have your staff, what is it, hourly update or a daily kind of thing? Or we treated you... it, yeah, uh, we treated it more like a consultant, like we yes. were consultants. Good, and good. we treated it more like a private, in this private business yeah. and tracked, yeah. you know, whether it was, I think we did 15 minute increments nice wow and, and every job so we did that for six months six months yeah yeah do you remember roughly i'm gonna put you on the spot here but what was the order of magnitude on the return on investment was it a two to one three to one six to one with any oh my gosh that's <laughs> yeah, that's okay yeah. <laughs> i just i just yeah. think it's such a brilliant way so most and i say that because most of us in the gis industry would would go off and build something that looks really cool and then come back and say hey look at the cool app i built and people would still go yeah but i don't see why we're spending this much money on people and technology so exactly yeah. and that i think because we love the text so much yeah. and we love yeah. what we can do with it yeah. that our first you know instinct is to build something and you know, let's build something yeah. cool. Let's build a mobile yeah. app and show them that we can take this data out to the field <laughs> and collect information yeah. Yeah. but that still doesn't make sense it to doesn't... everybody in the organization. So you need to yeah. really look at who is your audience and yeah. who is asking you to lay off people. Like, why yeah. are they asking? Yeah. Because they didn't see, they didn't know what we did. They, right. they saw maps, but they didn't realize how much work went into it. They didn't realize what yeah. we put into it, you know? Yeah. Um, now, this was the 90s, though, and you were CIO not very recently, and you said you experienced a similar mindset at the CIO. So tell us more about your journey as you went along. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Surrey, I, I, I focus on Surrey because it was my where I got my start, really. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, BC Gas I always remember Surrey. first. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it was so brilliant back then it was uh -huh. like I'm, i think that's why i'm so passionate about gis right. and then after Surrey did go to the township of langley um we did you know i went there to build their gis department they didn't have one uh -huh. and there because i went in we put, we i became the it director there and we put gis in it and you don't uh -huh. see that a lot we did a i did uh -huh. a gis or a geomatics strategy there Mm -hmm. and showed the benefits of linking GIS with IT because it's just, it really, to me, in my mind, it's another information system. Mm -hmm. And IT, IT does 
everything about technology for a city and mm -hmm. why would GIS not fit there? Uh -huh. um, but you don't see that a lot in local government at all. And um, we did the same thing pretty much at the Township of Langley as we did. So we, we built GeoSource, which is still being used today. Oh, of uh, course, gosh. they've updated it. Yeah. And, you know, we had fun in Langley. We had oh. fun. We, <laughs> I, I mean, we had fun in Surrey too. But, yeah. you know, we did municipal awareness days and we taught kids about GIS, you know, yeah. once a year, and they bus took bus loads of kids in, and we did a contest for naming GeoSource. So, with all the staff, and we made it fun and gave prizes for the best names. Amazing. You know, yeah. I love the creativity, and that goes back to your communications roots and your branding, and and coming, yeah, telling a story yeah. around things. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, before I left Surrey, we did do another analysis about data. Because we mm. used to, back in the day, we used to sell data, right? right? You'd sell data to the engineers, sell data to the developers, sell data to the nonprofit organizations that needed a, ma a map to make maps. Mm -hmm. And um, we did another analysis at Surrey to show that it actually proved that we it costs us more to sell the data than to just create a solution to give it away. And this was way before open data. Right. Mm -hmm. And we gave it, you know, we it, it wasn't as open as, say, we have today, mm -hmm. but I'm very passionate about open data and giving the data to people who need it. So we did that. We had a committee and we did that between like we brought in all the um, way back in the day, I guess it would be about 2004. We uh, created a committee with lo local governments in the lower mainland and mm -hmm. talked about the value of, you know, uh, value of giving data away and the time saves so the the technical people can focus on higher level jobs and tasks and yeah. instead of those mundane tasks of making data. So we did that at Surrey before I left and then again at the township. And uh -huh. so from there, I think Alex Miller, he, he noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> Once he notices it, you, you can't get away. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, brought me into Esri Canada. And, oh. you know, that job, I loved it so much. Had yeah. had so much fun. I got to meet people right across the country and, yeah. and really help municipalities create efficiency in right. their workflows and their yeah. work processes. And, you know, really focus on smart cities, smart communities. Uh -huh. um, but it's challenging. It's really challenging because mm -hmm. we've been doing this a long time and a lot of cities still have data in disparate systems. They have information that doesn't link together. They have different formats for even their mapping. Some, in, some departments use uh, Autodesk and some departments were using MapInfo or yeah. Keras at the time or, uh, you know, e Esri and uh, even Intergraph still, mm -hmm. right? So. Mm -hmm. You have to be cognizant of that. Of who who's your audience? Who are your who are the people? You also don't yeah. want to step on people's toes yeah. and really insult people because they are good at what they do. Well, and they, they spend a lot of time. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah. it has to be a collaboration, and mm. you know, and and you really have to focus on the people and the change yeah. and the change management. And yeah. I think I was able to really experienced that when I was at Esri, mm. at Esri Canada, because I did work with local governments and right. that was my role. I was industry manager in municipal solutions. And I was able to work with the team at Esri Canada to bring forward some of those solutions. Okay. To well, I'm sure, with, I know yeah. your customers trusted you because you had been there, you had sat in their seat, you had done that, right? And yeah. I, you know, often consultants, advisors don't have that real world experience. So I'd imagine they immediately trusted you and listened and and uh, took your advice. And yeah. well, I, I hope so. Well, you know, I also <laughs> was really involved in Eurissa and oh. GITA oh. Pacific Northwest at the time, and um, you know, all the um, industry associations. And I met people through Eurissa yeah. and through these associations. So I did already kind of know people across the country. Yeah. And we were peers. And then now I was working for Esri Canada and it was fun. And it, and they, yeah. yeah, I think they trusted me. I hope they yeah. did. I mean, yeah. oh, so, I know they did. Cause, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
yeah, yeah. from I think when when the hub came out, like this is years after we stopped selling data at Surrey, because that would have been early 2000s. And now in 2017, maybe mm -hmm. between 2016, 2017, we really started focusing on ArcGIS Hub and building mm -hmm. open data sites when I was at Ezra Canada. And in two years, we went from not having any sites in Canada to, I believe my memory serves me, it was about 107 across the country. Yeah. With yeah. of open data sites using the and that's hub. just uh, just on Esri, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So well, you know, I'm, I'm think I'm drawing a graph as we're talking here, but a maturity graph, and your career emulates perfectly the GIS maturity curve, where you started <laughs> out with data creation, and then you went into data modeling, and then system creation, and then into data distribution, and then now into systems, and then openness, and then advisor. Um, where, where did you go next? Like, so. Oh, well, after after Esri Canada, mm -hmm. um, I I I left because mainly because of personal reasons. My my parents were getting older, and mm -hmm. my husband's parents were getting older. Children were getting married, and hopes of grandchildren. I guess, <laughs> and a, and an opportunity came up at the city of Abbotsford. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't looking, and it came up and I thought this is a perfect opportunity to take a step back a little bit mm -hmm. and go back to my roots kind of thing, go yeah. back into serving the community, uh, being a public sector employee, see what I can do for the city and help them, you know, expand mm -hmm. and grow. The city was growing really fast and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty close to home. So I took the job and and we did so much there. I we were we were um, modernizing their web mapping system there. We built an open data site, uh, built a whole bunch of different, I guess, apps because that, the trend at the time was not building these big web mapping systems and going down to build an app for a specific like a purpose a so we, built, we yeah. built apps for capital the capital planning team or there was the cctv inspection inspections mm -hmm. and um the surveyors for collecting data in the field and and tracking that information and we built i think we built in one year i think we built 17 different apps for different different yeah. purposes for different departments yeah. and it was a lot of fun yeah. but what happened next was the cio position came up in maple ridge mm. and for me that i was like okay that is that is perfect for me because i can bring all this knowledge i have in it and gis and bring it together mm. in a mm. city and help them you know, realize the benefits of right. of that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, it was great, and but it was different than what I thought it would be. And mm -hmm. I, I realized when I went there that CIO, like the IT departments, don't really focus on GIS. No, they don't. They're they're more about you know the phone systems and security, the network, the infrastructure, and and all of the sort of nuts and bolts of building an IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I was more on the let's be collaborative. Let's let's yeah. build a, a collaborative system, whether it's the hardware, the software, or the technology. And GIS to me is part of that. So I started building that and we started making some great headway, mm -hmm. but I realized it isn't, it wasn't really, mm -hmm. it wasn't really where I wanted to be. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, 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 I love GIS, <laughs> you know, it is mm -hmm. funny though, because when I was taking that job, Chris North said to me, because of course I worked with Chris and I've known oh, Chris for years. Yeah. He said to me, you know, Karen, you're not going to do GIS anymore. And uh, I says, are you sure? Because it's the chief information officer. Of course I'm going to do GIS. Mm -hmm. And I did manage a team of GIS people, but I didn't, I wasn't involved. It was, with it as it was buried. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, I've long thought that it's time that CI, or IT departments let go of GIS. Uh, it's time that there's a chief geographic 
officer, the chief data officer, and that they're completely separate. You know, okay. because the mindset of CIOs, my feeling is that yes. it is typically about are the phone systems working, the team systems up and running, the yes. hardware there, the security, and this platform, this this societal platform that we all love called GIS, gets thrown to the side and it gets put into a ITIL process and and it just becomes another service and that doesn't do it justice. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you ever thought about the future of? GIS now, like you were there in the beginning, where's it going? Yeah. Now? Like, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, we've always talked about centralized GIS, decentralized GIS, or, uh -huh. you know, I, I think centralized GIS for a smart city concept is a yeah. great idea. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, I've always believed that the GIS department needed to or the GIS team needs to set the standards set, you know, for data, data management for mm -hmm. the, you know, updating all the systems. But when GIS isn't part of IT, there is a bit of a headbutt, headbutting there because IT doesn't want GIS to deal with the, the servers and the, and yep. the network and the, and right. the hardware and the software, because they manage that for all the other systems uh -huh. they manage that for microsoft they manage that for the erp systems and the security the network all of that so there is a little they don't really understand the gis and gis people tend to not really necessarily understand the it side of things right. so there's a little right. bit of headbutting i put personally would like to see them together but mm -hmm. working collaboratively yeah. as a as a team but you also have GIS professionals that work in planning, that work yes. in engineering, that work in parks, and they don't necessarily need to be on the GIS team. They uh -huh. are uh -huh. trained in their profession or in their industry. So one could, you know, you could have an arborist that uses GIS, yeah. you could yeah. have a planner that uses GIS, yeah. and you could have uh, an engineer that uses GIS. So. I think there's a little bit of both. I think you need a GIS team mm -hmm. in IT that right. helps set the standards, that helps keep the, yeah. the, the GIS integrated with all these other business systems, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. works very closely mm -hmm. with all of these other professionals in, on all of yeah. the other teams. Well, I, good, great point, great point. I've not seen outside of York region, um, GIS handled at a director level or above, right? So maybe what maybe what's been missing is GIS being at the table of senior level decisions. Um, yeah. Maybe that's one of the one of the compromises. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Usually you get a GIS manager. Uh -huh. um, I was fortunate in Abbotsford. I was the uh, senior manager of geomatics and at surrey mm -hmm. i was the gis man manager but it wasn't a wasn't a director so i think yeah. the highest level in gis that i was other than esri canada was yeah. the senior manager of geomatics at right. abbotsford but, but there i managed survey i managed drafting mapping oh. gis oh. and asset management oh wow so okay. those are all those are all, all part of geomatics. Yeah, but they all well, connect. Every city is different, I guess. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we've uh, this has been fascinating. I mean, I love hearing your career trajectory. Um, I had a chance to see your grandkids the other day and then run <laughs> around and you're smiling. And so yeah. we, we we hope to see you back in our field soon if you're if you're willing to come back to us. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now Karen, I've spent I've wanted to spend a lot of time in this second part because you have such a rich story, but we still have four more questions. And maybe we'll go, I'm gonna do this little off script from how I normally do it. Okay. And, and I'm gonna tell you the four questions all at once and we'll just tell an answer, one answer, right? Okay. So so you've told us about GIS and and you've given us a great understanding of how to talk about it. You have a long career. You've done many firsts in the industry. We all owe you a debt of gratitude for what you've done in Canadian GIS. Thank you. <laughs> we do. <laughs> My questions to you are, what is behind this passion you have? And at the end of it, like, what was the thing, the action that you took that you really are proud of? And then tell us about the hard times 
some lessons learned and then how okay. it's how it's humbled you so that okay yeah yeah I don't know. Well, what's I think, behind the passion here? I think yeah. curiosity and, yeah. no, you know, I think for me, people are amazing. People mm. can, the, the things that we can do, right? The things that people can think of, if only, I think we can do anything with technology as mm. long as you think about it. You may not do it right away, but somewhere along the line, you'll meet someone that, helps you or gives you an idea that you never thought about mm -hmm. and i've always been fascinated by the world and mm -hmm. geography i think i mentioned to you that I, it was either the eighth grade or the ninth grade yes. i did a project about the changing continents and back then i hand drew the world map and how the continents all fit together and then what they were going to look like what our world would look like 200 million years from now and i hand drew that all and i have always been fascinated and, and you shared that with me and i gotta tell you it is amazing <laughs> now if you with your with your uh, approval maybe i can pop it up on screen right now while we're talking about it and show if you if you want that's yeah. totally fine and i was so young when i drew that wow. well <laughs> yeah. you, you had it in you from a, a young age yeah. yeah and i love traveling too right so mm. um for, I love the culture and learning and immersing myself in d different cultures. My husband and I, mm -hmm. we made a, a sort of a pact years ago that we wouldn't aspire to get a bigger house or, you mm -hmm. know, fancier cars. We would travel. And yeah. in our spare time, we travel and we learn about different cultures. And so I think I've always been passionate about geography. Yeah. And our yeah. world and the changing world. You know, I think we composted before there was even an idea of composting mm. um we've been composting since we got married and we've been married a long time and mm. we used to put mm. all of our yeah. waste in in buckets and then we've used it in our garden ever since so mm. i think it's just that passion about how can we use the information about yeah. our location and yeah. make the world a better place yeah. and so i i i think I've always believed that and maps to me are amazing. Mm -hmm. We've been drawing maps since the beginning of time and the first explorers, like what, where would we be without those explorers and drawing the maps and, mm -hmm. can, you know, really calculating and surveying and, and putting that down on paper. So, and, and then, and then the next generation comes and says, Oh, Hey, we can make this better. And the next generation goes, Hey, how could we make that better? Right. And, all of that right like me you know even me as a young person at surrey taking the the um we used to put all the restrictive covenants and three-party easements and on paper little eight and a half by 14 sheets and they used to have them on white paper for initiated pink paper for acquired and blue paper mm -hmm. for registered well we we took all of that and put that on to the GIS system once we had the base layers, the base map done. But the people that were there, they've been doing that since like probably the 50s or 60s and they didn't oh. get it. And then when they saw it and they got it and we explained oh. to them, it was like a light bulb went off and then they think, oh, maybe we could do this. Maybe yeah. we could do this. <laughs> you got them hooked. And, and so yeah. I think it's probably a mentorship, a little training, yeah. little yeah. teaching, yeah. you know, I don't know. Of, yeah. I, I think on LinkedIn, I, I put down that I'm an IT GIS consultant, but I, I don't really know if it's a consultant, right? I, I, oh. I think it's just, That's I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm a GIS advocate, right? right. And, I'm a, and I'm a believer that GIS isn't, it is a niche, but not really anymore. I think the future of GIS is yeah. it's changed, right? Yeah. Everybody make, wants to use GIS now and uh -huh. you can use it to, like I said at the beginning, to find the next nearest Starbucks or where, uh -huh. you know, where do you want to go travel and where are all the hotels? Like you look at hotel.com or uh -huh. some of these sites out there, it's all, all using oh a form um, of GIS and information yeah. and, you yeah. know, three-star hotels, four-star hotels, right? Well, you know, do you want to use their Airbnb? Like that's all, you know, that, that mm -hmm. back end is really GIS. And yeah. I see it all integrating. I, I see it becoming more prevalent, but I mm -hmm. do see that 
it's about communication and it's about it's sort of like what i what we did at surrey with the teaching the departments teaching all the the leaders that uh -huh. where we did focus our time where we where, how we could help them do their jobs better and i believe everybody's job is as important as the next because you know as a as a manager i couldn't do my job if the staff weren't doing their jobs and uh -huh. i think i couldn't do my job as say a gis manager if the I don't know, the planning department wasn't doing their job because I'd have nothing coming from them to put into the GIS, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, they're all working together. Yeah. Well, well so, you know, so did I miss Andrew, something? Did no, I miss no, no, something? no. Oh, maybe if you did, let me know. <laughs> like so so you've talked a lot about the action and the things you've done, and you've talked about your passion. Um, this hasn't happened easily. And you talked a little bit about what it's like to be uh, a woman in the workforce. Yes. And that st it still happens today. And it's it's not something, it's something I don't understand. I don't condone in any way. And, and you know, whether it's that or other challenges, can you explain to our audience, you know, how should they approach the harder times? Like, well, I think just, just don't give up, you know, um, no. Don't try not to take it personal. I mean, in some cases mm. I did take it personal. It's hard not to take yeah. it personal, right? You know, when you know you can do it and you're not being promoted, for, for example, because maybe, maybe it's not because you're a woman, but it's mm. perceived that you are, especially, you know, if you are a woman. Um, back in, back in, in the day when I became the GIS manager at City of Surrey, um, I was the first woman uh, GIS manager in in local government in British Columbia. Hmm. So th that's probably on record somewhere too in the old archives, right? Yeah. Um, well, so I, you were saying they wrote something about it. They did. They wrote a. Yeah. They did a little bit of a press release about it because it was significant back then, right? Yeah. And but I've been blessed. I've been blessed with my career. I've been able to take part in many really cool initiatives. You know, I was on the a committee for the Surveyor General Branch of British Columbia hmm. when they we started doing digital plans submissions for okay. legal survey plans yeah. for LTSA. I was one on the very first committee. I have a little certificate and an award for that. And, you know, I was on the technical committee for the ICI Society of British okay. Columbia when yeah. it first started. Mm -hmm. um, I had some great mentors. Um, one of my first, the person who hired me at Surrey actually, uh, Terry Naylor, he was very supportive of mm. me and my career. And he, we still keep in touch today, which is awesome. really nice. Everybody needs somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm never one to, to not help out a young person because mm -hmm. that's our future. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that are going to take all this work that we did all the hard work that we did and bring it forward uh and make it make it even better but mm -hmm. the other thing i would say is have fun the best mm -hmm. the best experiences i've had mm -hmm. in my entire career are when we have been a team working together towards a goal but had fun at the same time right. if it's a slog yeah. and it and it becomes hard. I think you need to think about that and think: Do is this really worth it? Like, I'm not having fun, yeah. and why am I here? Yes, I need my job, but there must be a way to either change it or mm -hmm. find a place where I fit better. Mm -hmm. And I'm not telling everybody to quit their jobs and go do something else, but you know, <laughs> there, 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 you can't, you can't give up on yourself either and your beliefs and your integrity. Um, I agree. I think, I think you need to really think about what is your passion? What, what is your love? And, and if it isn't where you are, you know, you, you know that you do, and you yeah. can find it, you can go yeah. out there and find it, mm -hmm. which, which is kind of what I'm trying to do right now. Nah. And, you know, what is my next? Sometimes you think I want to be there. One of the things that I realized as I moved up into management was 
I miss the tech. I miss building apps. I miss doing all that fun stuff. You know, I yeah. what like what? I'm doing budgeting and strategic planning and you yeah. know all of this not stuff. Fun. You know, that's not fun. You're doing my arc map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wrote down some things that I wanted to say and and uh, you know, oh, just okay. always, always be curious, you know. Um be inclusive too. Be mm-hmm. inclusive, and and think about not. And this was re, this was something that we were trying to do, or what I was trying to do at at the city of Maple Ridge is, you know, sometimes you think, okay, we're going to give everybody the same tools, but not everybody mm-hmm. maybe necessarily needs the same tools, and so there's a lot of changes over over my career and over the years for. Um, being inclusive and and helping everybody have the tools they need to mm-hmm. do their job mm-hmm. and one one of the things i was thinking about was um of course you know i have grandchildren mm-hmm. and my you know my the older gran- my granddaughter she's four and you know she loves swing swinging at a park on oh, the swings okay. and then the younger one well i wouldn't put him on the regular swing because he's too little and he would fall off so oh, yeah. you know it's yeah. so cool to see the parks that they have the kids swings right so they're they're still swinging he's still swinging but he's on it <laughs> he's using a different tool right right so you know people can we as managers and technicians we can build tools but we also need to think who is the audience and can we change that tool so that everybody gets the benefit out of it and i think that's something where we're going today um and where we didn't really necessarily think about that way back when i started yes we built maps yes we built a mapping system but we didn't think about someone who might be colorblind, for example, or somebody who can't see well. And, and you know, just that inclusivity and making sure that you, you talk to people and yeah. you build a community yeah. and you find out what, what's needed and don't spend your time building something that might not be required. So we spent a lot of time back in the day just putting as much data in as we could, but some of that data we never used. So really talk to people and find out, you know, what it is that you're doing. Well, and demographics Um, are shifting too in Canada. We have new Canadians coming who need services and they, 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 you know, need to look at things in different ways or interpret information. You know, now we've got this wealth of data that we've all created and now it's about creating insight for the right people. Right. Yeah. 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 And then, and then, um, yeah. I there was a lot uh, last year, t- twenty twenty three. I did a presentation for women in public works, mm-hmm. and the topic there was about equity, and mm-hmm. being inclusive. And it was really powerful because you wouldn't think that today, you would have any issues with inclusivity and equity and and women working in in our industry but it still happens and it's still difficult for a lot of people and me as a somewhat successful woman in canada in british columbia i would love to be able to be an advocate for women but not just women any anybody who wants to get into this field, anybody who wants to get into GIS and Mm -hmm. really make a difference because it is a powerful system of systems. It is a powerful way of thinking and it, it, it's a powerful way to get your point across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, and I, and I totally agree. And (laughs) our, our industry um, is shifting and thankfully, you know, there's, Demographics are shifting, perspectives are moving along, and I, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing in the industry. I, I also know we have a ways to go. And Karen, anything you can do to help educate me and people and, and other people on what we can do differently and better, I'm all open, wide open well, to hearing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, so. hopefully I can help. <laughs> <laughs>
Nice. Maybe well, that's my next step is to be maybe it is. a GIS advocate or is, an yeah. information uh, advocate. Uh, or a mentor. Yeah, yeah mentor, yeah. something like that. Well, you know, because when you think about it, AI is pretty powerful too, but AI works, you know, I mean, that you kind of think IT, but mm. it's kind of GIT. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think more than ever, we need, we need ethics when it comes yeah. to data usage. I mean, AI yeah. to me, to me, AI is kind of what GIS people have been doing for many years is, yes. is automating and, and creating efficiencies. Yeah. It's just a little bit more intelligent than the user, right? But right. in many ways, it's the same concept. What we can't program right now, I think, and I'm not an expert on it, but is the 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 geographic ethics that need to go into AI. Right? Yes, and, and exactly. The, so, so there's a, a wide open market there. That's bigger uh, than me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. and I think about that all the time. I mean, we're 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 uh, Alexa users here. Oh, I, me too. I shouldn't I shouldn't have said her name. Good thing you have my my headset on because she would have come along here. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I just said her name. No. <laughs> I, I tested I tested it just before because I know I was coming on on this program and I tested it and asked where the nearest library is to my house right mm -hmm. and of course that's all built in she knows where this house is and of course the the answer is it's uh, the Fraser Valley Regional Library and it's 0.4 of a kilometer away oh, from wow. your home right so that's GIS and yeah, yeah. some way you know it's not using necessarily a map but it's using the locations and mm -hmm. And well, gathering where, that information and doing that our analysis. Friend, our friend Matt Patricia, who was on the show, talked about his application called yes. Query, where he's linked open data to Alexa and Google. Yeah. And oh gosh, now I said it. She's going to hear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we wrap it up and yes. say, ask you, um, how has this humbled you, your career? Oh, you know, I've met so many people that are way, way, way more. I mean, that are smarter than me, for sure, and that have done so much more. And, you know, like I, I think of people that have started this industry. I think I told you the story that, that I, I, I met Dr. Roger Tomlinson a few times, Jack Dangerman, I've presented yeah. with him. And how, do you, how are you not humbled by yeah. that, those people, right? Yeah. That have brought this industry so far. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, but yet, I did a I did a mad presentation for the township of Langley uh, to children mm -hmm. and showing, you know, base elementary school children that, you know, explaining to them about GIS and that to show them how a GIS worked, we had a bad guy pour da um, poison down a drainage hole where there was the fish written on the on the ground and showed how the GIS could trace it to where the outflow would be into the creek and explained that to kids well created a powerpoint show about it back in the day it was i think 2004 2005 yeah. and the word got out and dr tomlinson saw the presentation and loved it so much he invited me me little me from township of langley to ottawa to go have dinner with him Holy. so you know how how are you not humbled by those people like i was just a it director at the township yeah. of langley and he invented yeah. gis yeah. <laughs> and he invites me for dinner and you know and jack jack dangerman talking to me about you know i'm presenting down in florida uh in the early 2000s and you know he came and listened to me speak and says let's go for a walk you know let's get a coffee like yeah. these people are so important to this industry mm -hmm. and and yet they they still take the time to talk to people like yeah. me so i i know that there's a young person out there or maybe an older person out there that mm -hmm. will think of something way more profound than i've ever thought of and way that will change the world in amazing ways and so i love that i had this amazing career and yeah. hopefully still will yeah. um but I just think that unless we work together as a team and unless we bring our ideas together, we can't get anywhere. So yeah. I, I just, I love being a leader. I love being a manager. 
but I also love collaborating and bringing ideas forward together because there's always someone out there that can think of something way more profound than you can ever think of. Yes. And that is humbling to watch that in action. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, this has been lovely, Karen. And um, how can, uh, you know, if someone wants to get a hold of you because they've thought, wow, it's Karen Stewart and I want to ask her a question. Uh, <laughs> how could they get a hold of you? Well, I think right now the best way, I'm still active on LinkedIn and that's yeah. probably the best way. And if I, you know, start um, somewhere else in, in my next phase of my career, yeah. uh, that'll be, that'll show up on LinkedIn. And right now yeah. they could send me a private message and I'm really good at responding. At least I like to think I am really good at responding. <laughs> You're very good at responding. Venting somewhere in the world. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. generally yeah. I have, I'm always on. So I yeah. think that's the best way. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Karen, you know, you've done so many firsts. So if the, the first woman GIS program manager in BC, the first to create the cadastral map of the lower mainland, you know, the, the, the first all over the place. Again, thank you for being a pathfinder and sharing oh. your story with us. And I can't wait to see what the next first is. Oh, awesome. That, I, that'll be really cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, can I say one last thing? I want to say I'm really proud of all the people that I've mentored in the past yeah. and oh, yeah. all of the people I've worked with across the country when I was at Esri Canada and especially mm. the people that I hired young people that I hired uh, you know right out of university right out of college that are now thriving in their careers and I I feel like I'm the matriarch of <laughs> GIS especially in BC and I just want to yeah. say I'm proud of everybody so oh. yeah well That's, They'll hear that now as, yeah. as this gets shared. So, Great. <laughs> thank well, you, John. Thank you for joining us, Karen. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Yeah, you as well. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This episode of Pathfinders is sponsored by B Spatial Ontario. Join them at bspatialontario.ca and earn GISP credits, access webinars, and read the latest GIS industry news. Daddy's always going blah, blah, blah.